In this video, we will learn an easy way of how to figure out hybridization of atoms in a molecule. Hybridization orbital theory was developed because atomic orbital theory could not correctly account for geometries of a molecule. According to hybridization orbital theory, when atoms bond to each other in a molecule, they do so using hybrid orbitals. What are hybrid orbitals? When, when we hear the word hybrid, we think of basically a mixture of different things. So hybrid orbitals are a mixture of atomic orbitals. Let's look, think back to general chemistry and think about the atomic orbitals that we learned before. One atomic orbital is S. S has one atomic orbital, and we also have P, and P has three atomic orbitals, Px, Py, and Pz. These orbitals can mix together to form new orbitals that are called hybrid orbitals. What are these hybrid orbitals? They are sp, sp2, and sp3. There are more hybrid orbitals, but these are the ones that are relevant to, the, to our organic chemistry. So what is sp it's a hybrid orbital? Well, sp hybrid orbital is made by mixing one s orbital and one p orbital, such as px. sp2 is made by mixing one s and two p orbitals, such as px and py. sp3 is made by mixing one s orbital and all three of the p orbitals, px, py, and pc. Now that we know that hybrid orbitals are basically mixes of atomic orbitals, we will now learn how to easily determine hybridization of atoms in a molecule. And in order to do so, we need to first identify a special number called the steric number. Steric number is equal to the number of attached atoms plus number of lone electron pairs. So when we look at an atom in a molecule, we will ask ourselves how many atoms is it attached to and how many electron pairs does it have? Let's go ahead and practice by taking a look at a simple molecule of methane, CH4, and figuring out the steric number of the carbon. So when we look at this carbon, we just ask ourselves how many attached atoms is it uh, does it have? How many atoms are attached to it? So this carbon is attached to four hydrogen atoms. And the next thing we ask ourselves is how many alone electron pairs does it have? Well, we don't see any electrons around it, therefore it has zero lone electron pairs. Therefore, its steric number is equal to four. Now that we have practiced determining the steric number, we will see how the steric number is connected to hybridization. So I'm going to make a little chart for you, steric number and hybridization. Okay, so we need to know that when steric number is 2, hybridization will be sp. When steric number is 3, hybridization is sp2. And when steric number is 4, hybridization is sp3. Your professor might also ask you about the bond angles, so I'm going to include bond angles here as well. For sp, the bond angle is 180 degrees, sp2 is 120 degrees, and sp3 is 109.5. You can see that if you correctly predict the steric number, then you just you will be able to correctly predict the hybridization and the angle. Let's go ahead and practice because practice makes perfect. Let's look at this molecule. Let's say I have a carbon that's connected to three hydrogens, connected to another carbon that's connected to two hydrogens connected to another carbon with one hydrogen and a double bond with a carbon with one hydrogen connected to a carbon that has triple bond and a nitrogen. And let's say that I am asked to predict hybridization 
of all the carbons in this molecule. Let's start with the left carbon. First, we need to determine a steric number by looking at how many attachments does it have? How many uh, atoms is it attached to? Well, it's attached to three hydrogens and a carbon, so that's four attachments. How many lone pairs does it have? It has no electron lone pairs, therefore its steric number is 4 and its hybridization is sp3. You can see 4 is sp3 according to my chart. Let's look at the next carbon. It's attached to two hydrogens and two carbons, so it has four attachments. How many lone pairs does it have? None. Again, steric number is 4, hybridization, sp3. Let's look at the next carbon. It has three attachments, two carbons, and one hydrogen, and it has no lone pairs. Therefore, its steric number is 3, hybridization is sp2. Notice, I did not look at the number of bonds, I look at the number of attached atoms. It does not matter whether I'm attached to my, uh, my other carbon, for example, by, uh, by a double bond or a triple bond. I only look at the number of attachments, not number of bonds. Okay, continuing, the next carbon is attached to three atoms, two carbons and a hydrogen, so that's three nolon pairs. Hybridization is sp2, if it's 3. And finally, my carbon. Last carbon is attached to two atoms, a carbon and a nitrogen. Therefore, it has steric number of 2. It has no lone pairs. So, if it has a steric number of 2 because of the two attachments that it has, its hybridization is sp. Let's go ahead and practice another slightly more complicated molecule. It's a ring that has an oxygen in it. Like so. And there are a couple of things that are different in this molecule from the previous one. First of all, in the previous one, all the carbons and hydrogens were shown. In this molecule, this is a line bond structure. Hydrogens are not shown. So it is very important that if you have a line bond structure, the first thing you need to do is you need to add the correct number of hydrogens to the carbons. Because in line bond structures, carbons, uh, are the, the hydrogens connected to the carbons are not shown. Remember that there is a carbon at every vertex. So let's show our carbons. And we also need to remember that a carbon likes to have four bonds. So we will add the correct number of hydrogens by seeing how many bonds does the carbon already has. So for example, this carbon on the left, is, it has two bonds. Therefore, it needs two more hydrogens because every carbon wants to have four bonds. Okay, this carbon has three bonds, so it needs one more hydrogen. This carbon has only one bond, so it needs three more hydrogens. Next carbon, this one has three bonds, one more hydrogen, same thing here. And this carbon has two bonds, so it needs two more hydrogens. Okay, we have added our hydrogens. Why do we need to do so? It's very important because if you do not add your hydrogens, you might forget about these attachments and you might get your steric number wrong as well as your hybridization. So very, very important to add the correct number of hydrogens to the carbons that are not shown. And the second thing we need to do is we need to add electrons for an octet. So sometimes in the problems they will not show us electrons for elements such as oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and we need to add the correct number of electrons in order to make sure that all of the elements have an octet. Octet means eight electrons. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the oxygen that is shown here. It has two bonds, therefore it already has four electrons because each bond has two electrons. But it wants to have eight because it wants to be an octet. So there were four electrons that were not shown, but we will show them ourselves. Okay, now that we went through these two steps and we set up our molecule properly, now we can go ahead and we can figure out its hybridization. We will figure out the hybridization of carbons and atoms in this molecule. Let's start with this carbon. It is connected to four attachments, two hydrogens, oxygen and a carbon, no lone pairs, that means four plus zero is four, Hybridization is sp3 because the start number is 4. Let's go ahead and look at this carbon. It's connected to three hydrogens and a carbon, four attachments, no lone pairs, hybridization, sp3. Let's take a look at that carbon. Again, it's connected to one hydrogen and three carbons, which is four attachments, no lone pairs, hybridization, sp3. Next carbon is connected to a hydrogen and two carbons. It has no lone pairs. Its, it's state number is 3. Hybridization is sp2. Same goes for this carbon. One hydrogen, carbon and a carbon, three attachments, no lone pairs. Hybridization is sp2. This carbon is connected to two hydrogens, an oxygen, and a carbon. It has four things it's attached to, no lone pairs. Hybridization is sp3. And finally, let's, like, let's take a look at this oxygen. It's connected to two attachments with two lone pairs, one lone pair, two lone pairs. Two attachments plus two Lone pairs is equal to 4, its direct number is 4, and its hybridization is sp3. Let's go ahead and the next thing I will do with you is I will tell you about a slight exception to the rule that makes hybridization a little bit more complicated and usually professors don't give it but sometimes I do see it. So let's go ahead and uh, note this. when an atom is sp3 hybridized but it can participate in resonance but can do resonance it will not be sp3 it will be sp2 so you might have noticed if you practiced before that sometimes, rarely, you would think that something is sp3, but the correct answer is actually sp2. And that happens when an atom is participating in resonance. So let's go ahead and show an example of this case. Let's say I have a molecule that looks like this. And let's say I want to figure out the hybridization of the oxygens in this molecule. Well, again, uh, I need to make sure that I have the correct electrons on the oxygens, that everyone has an octet and is happy. On the middle oxygen, we see it's connected to two bonds, which means it has four electrons. That means it needs four more electrons to have an octet. And same thing for the oxygen on top, two bonds, which means it has four electrons already, but it wants eight. So we give it four more electrons. Now let's take a look at the oxygen, each oxygen. So the oxygen in the middle is attached to two atoms, one on the left, one on the right. And it has two lone pairs, one and two, which makes which means its stack number is four, and you would think its hybridization is sp3. Let's go ahead and look at the top oxygen. It has two lone pairs, and it's attached to one attachment, which is the carbon here. So one plus two is three. 
its hybridization must be sp2. Okay, now we can take a look at this molecule and we can ask ourselves, is there resonance? And actually in this molecule there is resonance. The resonance will look like this and we will show the new resonance form. Okay, the oxygen in the middle used one of its uh, electron lone pairs to make a double bond here, so it has only one left. And this double bond went away to give extra electrons to the oxygen on top. So this one got a negative charge if you calculate its formal charge, and this one is positively charged. If we take a look at the middle oxygen and we recalculate its steric number, we will see that it's still connected to two atoms, two carbons, but now it has only one lone pair. So its steric number becomes three and its hybridization therefore is sp2. So, we will choose this hybridization. This is the correct one. So, we can see that if we see that an atom that is sp3 originally can participate in resonance and it becomes sp2, sp2 will be the correct hybridization of our, uh, of our atom in a molecule. This is Maya from Transformation Tutoring. Below you will find a link to practice more hybridization problems. I hope you found this lesson helpful and I will go ahead and go over the practice problems in the link in my next video. I look forward to seeing you soon.